Hey, you know what I can't stand? Gold diggers. Hey, hey, what's up? It's your boy Boogie Black. So, hey, this is my second reaction video. Today, we're going to be going over an episode of the Poor Minds podcast. In this episode, they're going to be talking about the differences between cultures as far as when it comes to marriage, as far as when it comes to what type of men they're seeking. And unfortunately, they're going to be teaching how to uh, get women to use the man's money to grow their business and themselves. Um, I'm going to be reacting to this video, obviously. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on it. I do go in just to let you know, this is only part one. There will be a part two coming. This is about around the first, like, 10 or so, 15 minutes of the podcast. It's about a two-hour long podcast. So, without further ado, y'all know what time it is. Peanut butter jelly time. Oh, you said a high, high what is it? Hypergamous. Hypergamous. Dating and business strategy. Okay, so what is a hypergamous? Okay, so in every country except for this one, of course. Okay. <laughs> women are brought up to find a man that can hunt fish and build a house, figuratively, right? Okay. Right. And so... You know, in every other culture except for this one um, here in the United States, every single daughter is raised to, like, look for a man that can protect and provide. Mm -hmm. And so here, for some reason, it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. I, I blame the men. You can't blame men for the reason why it'd be a hunter-gatherer builder is being frowned upon. Social media is what's doing that. Movies is what's doing that. Women with the same mindset like you are doing that right now. There's always this agenda out there. You got a choice, you know, but yet, as we're going to find out later on in this video, as far as like where her clientele comes from and what she's teaching them to do, as she, if you look up what her job description is, later on, she's going to state that she teaches women to go build their business and begin to get big pretty much using their man's money so like every other culture you know they literally raise their daughters yeah. to marry well like they want them to be taken care of absolutely they don't even move their children out of the house until you know they find Correct. the perfect find the Correct. Husband, yeah. but you know a lot of people's argument is um a lot of these people have arranged marriages mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and that's what comes with us having the option to you know marry for love and marry who we want so what would be your response to that of the grass is greener on the other side type deal well, you know, the grass is greener where you water it. See, here we go again. We're talking about other cultures. Now, they're talking about arranged marriages. If you have arranged marriages in a culture, it's more than likely probably a religious thing. And yeah, there are quite a bit of cultures outside the U.S. that have arranged marriage. But you still have to understand the culture. See, this is where usually your brain kind of comes in to play. When it comes to an arranged marriage or when it comes to where the family keeps their daughter in the house until they find somebody that's worthy enough to marry their daughter or wait, Either or, it's kind of like an exchange. They're looking at the man that not only, for the most part, will treat her well. There, there's a lot of other good dudes out there. The ones that kind of just get a daughter away, get highlighted more. But there's a lot of good fathers and mothers that want their daughter to be treated well. But what they're looking for the qualities in the men isn't just how they're going to treat the daughter. And it's not just how much money that dude has. You can have all the money in the world. But if you don't know how to use it, you don't qualify. And yes, they want their daughters to marry well. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they want them to marry the top of 1% of men. Because if that was true, none of their daggone daughters would ever get married. You really got to you gotta look at these things. Yes, we got the choice of marry for love. And that's actually a really good blessing to have. But you can't keep using these raised marriages. You can't keep using other cultures, ways of living for where we live today. If you want to keep using that, then you might as well move to a different daggone country. Work with what you got here. Make it better. It's something we all can do. I believe that you should live a soft life with or without a man, but with his wallet is so much easier mm, and so is. much faster to build what you need to build. And he's going to spend his money anyway. Let's keep it real. So why not when you look like this, <laughs> exactly. Like, That's right they're going to spend it anyway. <laughs> they're going to spend it. You're either going to get, you know, a $400 table at Pasha and mm. a bottle and whatever and have a $700 night, mm. or you're going to take that $700 and start your brand new business and fund it and and grow it and get your inventory for it. And that mm -hmm. just makes sense to me. Right. I'm with you when you are. You yeah, know. he's going to leave at some point. Mm -hmm. By death or by dishonor, that man is going to go. Dishonor on you 
dishonor on your couch. So no, I, I'm I'm really just joking. Seriously though, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Like as being military, being a marine myself, the last comment she said is like he's gonna leave, whether it be death or dishonor. It's death before dishonor. And the fact that they're sitting there talking about, oh, it's a lot easier to use your man's money to build your business. No, oh, because he's going to spend the money on you anyway. You're going to get a 400 bottle. This 400. Maybe all these dudes out there buying people $400 bottles. That ain't even the mill. Come on, you're going to have a $700 night. Why not invest into your business? Now, granted, that was something that she said was smart. Why go out and party all the time? Why go out and buy all these fancy things, these materialistic things? Why not invest it in yourself? That that That's smart. I, I, I definitely give her that one. You know, and I'm not going to lie. She is definitely an intelligent woman. She knows what she's doing. She got her business going. And from what I heard from one of the comments when I made one of the shorts is she's put a lot of people on. Give her credit for that. She, I guess, is on the way of retiring her husband. Give her credit for that. But a lot of these women that's watching videos like this don't got money like that. And a lot of these women that's watching videos like this won't end up in her situation. And you're teaching those women to go find these guys that spent probably most of their whole life earning this daggone money taking it to take that money from them to build themselves up to be like oh guess what he's gonna leave you anyway there's nothing wrong with you having your goals and aspirations and you meeting somebody male or female and y'all work together to achieve those goals it's really kind of sickening hearing some of this daggone stuff it's like they sit and lie and wait and then it's like oh this dude got some money let me go get him go use my charms okay cool hey let me go get some money, start my business. Ten years down the road, like you see a lot, a lot what happens after they had a couple kids or something, they divorce and bounce and they got even more money. And they're sitting there flashing it, doing all this crazy stuff. You know, why these kids are getting raised by a single parent? By the guy that worked all of his life for that daggone money now has nothing, but you have everything. Guys will do this to women too. They're out there, but that narrative's not being pushed. It never does. It's death before dishonor. I want you to define soft life because I yeah. feel like on the internet, everybody has a different definition of yeah. soft life. And everybody's yeah. like, everybody in a soft girl era. This is true. And I can tell by your hands, Looking bitch, it ain't, it ain't giving <laughs> soft. A little crusty, a little ashy, it's but soft. it's not soft, baby. That ain't Jergens, bitch. Yes, no, it's I'm with you. Yes. So define exactly what a soft life is. Yeah, so to me, a soft life is when you have options to choose. Right. Okay. You have the ability to say, yes, I want that. You have mm -hmm. the ability to treat yourself. You have the ability to say, yeah, I want to go. Let's book the flight. Yeah, I want to get that. Let's purchase it. Mm. Yeah, I want to move. I'm ready to move. Let's move. Mm. That is what a soft life is to me. It's mm. freedom to be able to decide what you want. Mm -hmm. Some people, it looks like Chanel and Birkin bags. Some people, it looks like, um, you know, a brand new Porsche. To others, it looks like a man who you know, takes care of them, opens the door, puts on their shoes, makes sure they're not ashy, fix their hair. I mean, my man's running around the studio. Here's your bag. Here's your this. Here's your that. He is by no means. I know. No I seen when he walked in. He had all your jewelry. <laughs> I said, no, that's right. Yeah. I yeah. can't be one of them. Hey. All right. So this is something I can agree on just a little bit. So everybody should be striving to live a quote unquote soft life. We need to have to, we have the point in life where you could be like, hey, babe, Let's go here. A bait. Let's go get that. A bait. Let's go do these things. That's what you want to get as long as you're doing it the smart way and not just blowing everything you're not going to have. But in the way that she's presenting this is she has those options. Yeah, let's go do this. Yeah, let's go do that. There's a lot of alpha males out there be like, oh, oh, are you like a woman make those time of the stuff? If we go there, because I told so. If we buy this, because I told so. I'll tell her what to do. That's definitely the stop, too. Because a lot of the power that guys have is because they got a strong woman by their daggone side that fuels them. Look at the difference between a dude that's single, a look at the difference between a guy that just has any woman next to him, and look at the difference between a guy that has a strong woman next to him and see what the difference is. But also be warned because if that same strong woman has her own dreams and aspirations. It is by no means a, you know, um, what, do they, what do they call them? Um... Them little little sissy boy, sassy boy, kind of like little little bottom of the barrel type of you know. Oh, I got it. He ain't we that type of dude. Sassy. He uh, he ain't that. Yeah. Right? But he his biggest flex is is how he treats me, shows up for me, 
and serves me. So in return, I do the same for him. We both got two different love languages. Mm -hmm. His his output is acts of service, mm -hmm. which I love that. <laughs> baby, that's love. That's love language. Right, that. right. So that's why he'll he'll do these things for me, and you know the reciprocity is there. But he gets fulfillment in me bossing up. He gets mm -hmm. fulfillment in watching me hit studios and watching me grow my brand and watching my numbers rise and right. watching. And again, you know. Whenever, however, whatever it looks like when he's gone, his money that he started my company with continues to roll in, honey. The coins don't stop. Right. So it started off bad, went good, didn't look bad. Classifying people as bottom of the barrel is going to hinder you. When you start putting, when you start classifying people, this is the reason why I hate when people are like, oh, I'm a Republican. Oh, I'm a liberal. Oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, and a third. Why not just believe what you believe in? There's going to be qualities in people you don't want to be with. There's going to be qualities in people you do want to be. You're going to be coming across people that may start off with a bunch of negatives in their life. But the only reason why the negatives are there is because of how their life is going. You put them in a different atmosphere or you help them out, or you lift them up, and they can become a completely different person. I'd say right now, I was definitely one of those daggone people. Finances didn't mean nothing to me. My daggone life when I was single, none of that really mattered. I literally was just floating across life. I'm a lot better version of a person I am right now than I ever was during those years. And those years, somebody like this would be like, well, you're a bottom of the barrel guy. But now I'm married. I'm doing a lot better. I'm finally putting, I've been talking about trying to do reactions for years. Never got around to it. Now I'm doing it because I'm with somebody that holds me accountable. That sees the good of me. That pushes that good of me. She allows me to do the same to her. And we push each other. Don't be caught spying nobody's bottom of the barrel. And then the last thing she said. Oh, when well, he's gone because he's gonna go, my bitch is gonna be <laughs> Yeah, again, you're sending these women or anybody watching this to think the person with they that are gonna be with will all was is going to leave them. What she said there in the middle, as far as them having their different love languages and how they're slightly different, but they actually they complement each other. That's very intelligent. Not a lot of people know about love languages. I'm just recently learning about mine. You know, I really gotta dig deep. That's really important. That That's what makes a relationship last. That's why I know that the relationship that she has with her husband is more than like the ironclad. But with all of her people that she's coaching and her business more than likely won't find out and won't happen. If y'all have watched this show from the beginning, y'all know we used to talk about BDBs, a big dick baller. Like, yeah, girl, go get yeah. one. Yeah. But me and Dre always talked about this. And I, this is why we gonna have a good time today. It was like a air, like a point where it was like I had men on my line. They was giving me money, giving me money. I wasn't going buy bags. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going buy shoes. I was getting out of debt. I yes. paid my car off. Yes. Paid my credit cards off. All that yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like girls was watching the show and be like, Oh my god, look at Lex. She got this cheap ass wig on. She not having her way. I'm out of debt, bitch. See, this is what I'm talking about now. Like I said, this definitely does happen with men and women, both on both sides. Women are definitely more known for doing this. Men really aren't known as much, but there definitely are some moochins out there. And that's pretty much what that was for moochins. I got, I had men on my line. They were giving me money, men insinuating that it was multiple men. So multiple men gave her money to help elevate her. I'm not going to knock the game if it's going to make yourself successful. The only time I knock it is when you're stepping on people to do so. Because if you're going to be willing to get all that money back from the men, if any one of them go broke, you better be there to help. Them. Don't be there and be like, oh, well, too bad to your fault. No, I don't know what her relationship was, is with those men. Maybe she could have, like, gave them a kickback for helping me a think, you know? These women could actually be really good women. The stuff that how they're teaching, I already don't agree with. But, you know, again, you're teaching women to have multiple men to give them money to elevate themselves and get themselves out of debt. When they're doing these favors where they probably want to be with you. And then there's some slimy men out there. I ain't gonna lie. There's probably actually some men out there. I'm not gonna say that they deserve it. But karma's karma. East side works. It's just crazy. Why give yourself all that drama? Yes, I know plenty of women that drive these top-notch tier one A-plus cars and, mm. and could barely afford to keep it on the road. Like, yeah. baby, you oh, driving yeah. with no insurance and yeah. in that? Like, you... You at the gas pump putting ten dollars in the head. I mean, because these days Project. it's all about perception. It's mm -hmm. all about what it look mm -hmm. like. People care way more about mm -hmm. looking like they have it than actually having it. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. That right there is probably the best thing I heard this podcast. People do want to go out there and look like they have it. You know, they they look like money. But if you look at all the millionaires, the billionaires out there, and look at what they're wearing. They, they, they have the pride. They look like they're just getting stuff from like. The cheap store. 
you know, having some bag on new balances on a good pair of slacks and a shirt. And I sitting there going around and having all this bling, this, this bag on shiny, this autumn, you know, car looking good on the outside, but looking trash on the inside or going to sitting there renting all these daggone cars. So you got to have the mindset of what you want. You can't be what you want if you don't have the mindset of what you want. What they said was very intelligent. If you want to be successful, develop that mindset. So thank y'all for watching. Hey, this is only part one. This is a two hour long podcast and I kind of laid out a couple of things in this reaction video. I want to highlight more. I did watch more of this. There are some actual better points that they talk about and I want to highlight those too. I don't want to sit there and make all my videos just me bashing on people. They got some really good points. So if you like the video, like it, subscribe it, share it, get the word out there. Every video I post is going to be better and better. So, hey, y'all know what time it is. Peanut butter jelly time.